Hey, I have a question for you. Do you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain? Do you like beers loaded with coconut flavor? Well, come with me and escape. So as part of my homebrew club's White Elephant Exchange, so I got a pack of Butterfly Pea Flower Tea. Oh wait, that got stolen. So I actually got a one liter pack of pineapple puree. So I thought a pina colada inspired hazy IPA loaded with coconut and pineapple flavors, that would be fun. So in this video, I'll take a look at what I did to make this pina colada inspired IPA. So what did I do with the coconut? What was my base beer? What was my process for toasting the coconut and then adding it into the fermenter along with the pineapple? And then we'll come back and see how did the beer turn out? So before we jump into this batch, so one of the concerns people have with brewing with coconut is about the impact on head retention. Well, a few years ago, my girlfriend, she brewed a coconut stout. She does bottling beers. That one, I don't know, it ended up with kind of coconut floaties in each of the bottles. The head retention on the beer was terrible. Well, I don't know how well you can see it right now in this glass, but the head retention, the foam, it's all been great on this beer. I also get a lot of coconut aroma, lots of coconut flavor. Well, before we jump right into this beer, let me back up a little bit and see how we got here. So the basis for this one is my recent Treehouse Hazy IPA. Check out that video for more details on the brew day and specifics about the recipe. My kind of figures since that beer had a reasonably modest hop load on the hot side, I could split off two and a half gallons, about 10 liters, into a fermenter and then play with it, try to drive it into a tropical pina colada inspired IPA. So scale down for my larger size, the grain bill 85% two row, 10% flaked oats, 5% carafoam. You can look at the amounts on the screen. The mash was for 60 minutes at 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius. The start of the 60 minute boil was a small amount of Warrior to give about 20 IBUs. Then a 20 minute addition had small amounts of Citra, Amarillo and Simcoe all to give right around five IBUs each. And then the recipe called for using the Citra, Amarillo, Simcoe, adding those same amounts at flame out. Then with the wort split off into three fermenters, it was time to give one of them the pina colada vibe. So the yeast I'm using this was a half a packet of Ebergarden dry yeast. So I'm pretty sure I'm not saying that correctly. Ebergarden, that's what I'm gonna go with. But this was one of the packs that my girlfriend recently brought back from Norway. It's a dry yeast from Kvike Yeastery. This is my first time giving it a try, so I was curious. Looking at the description from the website for Ebergarden, says the flavor and aroma is of tropical fruit. Then it mentions Ebergarden enhances the bitterness. It's recommended to adjust to a lower IBUs. So tropical fruit, that sounds good. Enhances bitterness, uh, I'm not quite sure that's what I want in this beer. We will see later, it came out maybe a little bit more bitter than I wanted. So it makes me wonder, maybe it wasn't the best yeast to choose, but it still made a pretty good beer. Then after eight days in the fermenter, it was time to add my additions. So I added two ounces of Brew One hops, now my one liter of that pineapple puree, and then 14 ounces of a toasted coconut. I went with an unsweetened flaked coconut. Well, let's take a closer look how I prepped the coconut for this batch. So this was my first time toasting coconut myself. I selected unsweetened coconut flakes. I'm sure that shredded coconut would work fine. So my selection of organic coconut, well, that's totally optional. So I roasted each 14 ounce bag separately, spreading them out in a layer of wax paper on baking sheet then placing the sheet into a preheated oven. The first batch was a bit of a trial and error, so I found out for me that 12 minutes, that worked out pretty well. I broke that up into three four minute segments with a stir each time. After four minutes, the coconut is warm with just a touch of color. At the eight minute mark, the coconut is starting to develop some light brown colors right around the edges. And then after the 12 minutes, the coconut has a nice toasted color that I'm looking for. And at this point, the smell is wonderful. I'm not quite sure how much it helped, but I blotted the coconut on a paper towel to try to remove any excess oils. The baking sheet was a bit oily, but I didn't really notice the much oil that was coming out onto the paper towels. I then added the toasted coconut to a pair of sanitized hot bags. Each of these bags is pretty large. I wanted to make sure to give the coconut plenty of opportunity to expand. I also added a sanitized sous vide magnet into each bag. This was both to add a little bit of weight, but also figured I could use the magnet to help pull the coconut down in the beer. We'll see that later. So I decided to dry hop with two ounces of Brew One hops as well. The beers I've made in the past with Brew One have always been a really nice pineapple note. So I thought it would work really well in this beer. I then added the hops directly into the fermenter and then the one liter container of the pineapple puree went in. Then the bags of coconut. It worked out well to use the magnets to hold the coconut down under the beer surface. At this point, the fermenter is fairly full. 
but I don't expect an aggressive fermentation just from the pineapple and the coconut additions. I do know the coconut, it's gonna absorb quite a bit of liquid, so a little extra volume is probably gonna help me out when I get time to keg this one. I gave the beer another week in secondary fermentation to finish up. I took a gravity sample at this point, and the beer was kind of bitter at this point. So I suspect that bitterness is probably a combination of things. One, the base beer had 41 IBU, so that's adding some bitterness. Then the fully fermented pineapple, I suspect that's probably not really adding any sweetness, and it may add actually a little bit of a tartness or a bitterness. And then the Evergarden yeast, it said it enhances bitterness, so I definitely think some of the bitterness is also coming from that. So at this point, I'm thinking of ways I can fix it before I put it in the keg. Since my fermentation chamber was tied up at the moment, I cold crashed the beer out in my cool garage for two days. And then as I get ready to keg, I decided to add in eight ounces of lactose and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. The goal here was to boost the sweetness of the beer and also add in maybe a little bit of a creamy character of a pina colada. So I boiled the lactose in a small amount of water, then added the vanilla extract once it had cooled just a little bit. Adding the mixture in the fermenter, it just seemed like the easiest path at this point. Then the beer was transferred into a keg. I probably should have weighed the keg to see exactly how much I lost to the dry hops and the coconut. I had visions of the coconut here tasting like kind of this beer infused coconut. Oh man, it was disgusting. It was like bitter cardboard flakes. But I guess that's a good sign that lots of that coconut flavor was in the beer, which is exactly what we wanted. So as you saw it earlier, there's the beer. So I wanna take a quick evaluation of this beer. Look at how is the coconut flavor in this beer, the aroma, the flavor, the head retention. Let's take a look at the base recipe. How did I like the recipe? And then also the additions that I made. And then what about that Evergarden yeast? So with the coconut, I'm really happy. This has got a lot of coconut aroma. It's really what you hit you at first. You get a coconut, I get that vanilla as well, but a lot of coconut hits you on the flavor. So when I was looking at research for coconut additions, the amounts were pretty varied. Some of them were just a small amount of what I did. Some were maybe double of what I did. Say 14 ounces into that two and a half gallon batch. For me, that's what I would target again. Yeah, I mean, you could clearly, you could jack it up more if you really like coconut, or you could dial it back if coconut's not your thing and just want to touch. But I was really happy. I think the process I used for toasting the coconut process I used for kind of dry hopping with the coconut, dry coconut in, I guess. They both all worked out really well, and I got a lot of nice flavor. The head retention on this beer has been really good. It's not quite as visible in this glass as it is with a normal glass, but I usually get a lot of lacing, a lot of head retention, so I don't really notice a negative of any kind of coconut oils on the head retention or just on the lacing. You know, the overall recipe, it was kind of a compromise, right? Because I was already brewing a hazy IPA, so I went with that one. So I think the extra bitterness that was in the base beer didn't really play really well with this. If we taste it, it definitely has a little bit of too much bitterness, though there's definitely a bit of maybe kind of an astringent bitterness to that. So I'm not sure how much of it is, say, bitterness from the hops. I tend to get hop bitterness, like a 60 minute boil edition. I tend to get more of this kind of smooth bitterness that kind of builds over time. This has got a little bit more of kind of a harsh bitterness that hits me on the side. So I'm wondering a little bit, you know, fermented pineapple, I think it probably adds a little bit, kind of some, some tartness, some bitterness to it. You know, maybe I could have added some like pineapple flavoring or add the, you know, the puree directly in the keg or, or split it up so it wasn't all fermented out. I just figured that was going to be a bit of a mess. The brew one hops, it's really hard to pick out the kind of brew one hoppy flavor in this one. There's just a lot of other flavors. But I think the lactose and the vanilla, I think those were right amounts. You definitely get a little bit of a sweetness and it helped balance it out compared to the flavoring that I had before I kegged it. It was definitely really bitter. At this point, it's just maybe a little bit more bitterness from than my preference. So I think if I was gonna brew it again, I think that's the one thing I would just target, maybe you know, trying to get a little less of a bitterness in it. So how could you do that? So that could be either adding some of the puree directly into the keg, so you had that unfermented pineapple puree to give some sweetness. It could be dialing it back some of the IBUs on the base recipe. Like I said though, I don't know that that was a problem. I think it may just be the yeast. Go for a yeast, like maybe even like a Voss if you want to stick with a Kvik, or just go with an English ale, like a London ale three type thing. That's something you would use for a hazy IPA or maybe just kind of another like lower attenuating English ale strain. So as I mentioned, the bitterness from the Evergarden, how much else do I get from this? You know, it's really hard to tell. So with the Evergarden yeast, I definitely mentioned, I get a little bit more bitterness. You know, I'd split off that New England IPA and did half of it the same way as the Treehouse IPA, 
but I fermented that with the Evergarden. When comparing the two side by side, the Bootleg Biology Secret Clubhouse blend and then the Evergarden yeast, the Evergarden one has definitely got more of a bitterness. You get a little bit of the character you get from this one, a little bit of that, a little bit of kind of a harshness in, in the bitterness. So as you saw earlier, I had three fermenters. One was the Hazy IPA with a treehouse. It was the Bootleg Biology Secret Clubhouse blend. The other one was this, which was the Evergarden and then the Pina Colada editions. And then the other one was also Evergarden yeast, but I went with the same dry hopping as the Treehouse beer. When I'm tasting those ones side by side, there definitely is more bitterness in the Evergarden one. But as far as other characters from the Evergarden, you know, it's pretty hard to pick out. So overall, I think this is a pretty good beer. It's got a lot of those tropical flavors that I'm looking for. It's got the coconut. You definitely get, you know, pineapple, whether that's from the pineapple, the brew one, or if that's from the yeast, tropical fruity flavors. You definitely get some sweetness. You get the vanilla. The vanilla really, it, it's there. It adds a really nice note to it. So I think I learned a lot from doing this beer. Hopefully you learned some from watching this video. So something like this in the future, I may try to make it again with a couple tweaks. So if you haven't, make sure you check out that video where I brewed the Treehouse Hazy IPA and the base beer for this one. And cheers.